Have you ever met a clay creature that can sing before? Well, my friend here can sing any tune you like. Just pop a phone in him, and the sound bounces around his mouth and comes out louder than you'd ever expect. And here's how to make it. First, you get some air drying clay, container for water, a chopping board with some plastic wrap so it doesn't stick, paintbrush, Stanley knife or just any butter knife from the drawer, a lid of some sort, I've just got a paint container here, a rolling pin, some plastic wrap and some baking paper. Some cardboard rolled up to make a tapered cylinder and some sticky tape. Any tape is fine. All right, so we're rolling our clay out. We've just got our chopping board with some plastic wrap on it and our rolling pin and we're just slowly pushing it thinner and thinner. You want it about half a centimetre thick. Now this can take a while and a bit of playing around. You can fold it over and under again until you get a nice shape and enough surface to roll it around the tube. And don't worry if it cracks or breaks. That's the beauty of clay. You can just stick it right back together. So now we've rolled the clay flat, we're going to roll it around the piece of cardboard. That gives us the shape of our body. So all we do is wrap the cardboard in the baking paper and just carefully, you just roll it out like this. And again, doesn't matter if it breaks because you can just fix it. And there we have our body slowly coming to life. Grab your rolling pin and we just want to smooth that edge, that join of the clay where we rolled it, just smooth it out until it's nearly gone, till there's a seamless line and that'll make it look like a cylinder, which helps the sound bounce around his mouth. So once you're done rolling, it's time to cut it down to shape and make the hole for the phone. We're going to be using a knife, so make sure an adult's around. Be very careful and make sure your fingertips are nowhere near the blade. Grab your phone, and this is going to leave the mark of where to cut the hole. So just gently leave a mark on the clay, pick up your knife, cut around the imprint, but you want to make it about twice as big as the phone. So we just go down like that and carefully, carefully across. So as you can see, the imprint is about twice as big. And then we just use the knife and very carefully just pop out that piece of clay and just double check with your phone. You can always make it wider, it should just pop into that hole. And now that we've peeled out the square hole, we're going to cut it to length. So this is the size of our creature. So we'll grab our knife again, being very careful, mind your fingers, pick a length and then just cut around and it doesn't matter if it's uneven because we're putting lips on there soon, so that'll cover all the crookedness. And then once you get all the way around, we pull it off. So after we've cut it to length, we're going to roll out a piece for the base. Just another easy flat piece. You just grab it and mark out how wide it is. And then we get the knife and just roughly just cut around That's that mark. We've got a piece for the base. We're just going to pop it on the bottom here. And this is where the fun starts. You just squish it in with your fingers, just like the join when we rolled it the first time. So now we're just using our thumb to smooth it off and make that line invisible. So now we've finished blending that edge. We're going to get our knife carefully and we're going to cut a little hole in the bottom here so we can put the cord through for our phone to charge. So carefully grabbing the knife and watching your fingers, just carefully put a little hole in the bottom here. Just like that. It can be any shape you like, really. Just big enough for the cord to come through. Okay, so what I'm doing here is making the texture of the skin. I'm just using a lid, but you can use anything. It's literally up to your imagination. I decided to make scales for this guy, and so I'm just using the curve of the lid to make a pattern like scales. And it might help to have a picture of the skin you want or the texture you want, but you can use your fingers, you can use a coin, you can use a brush. You can really use anything, it's just up to you. Keep going around that until you've covered the entire body with some texture. And once we've finished, we just put it aside to dry. Okay, so I've let the body dry, finished all the scales, and now we're gonna put the legs on. And these are gonna stop the body from rolling around and keep your phone safe. You only need a little bit of clay, and you just roll it up on your hands like this. So what I've done is I've just rolled a piece of clay into a little ball and bent it in half. And this is going to be my feet. I think I might add some toes. So I'm just going to roll little balls for the toes. They don't need to be very big. And then I'm just going to stick them on the end of the feet like that. Just squeeze it on there and just blend it on with your finger. Do the same for the other side. And add another piece for the leg. Set them aside to dry and then we can stick them to the body. 
Okay, so now the feet are dry, we're going to attach them to the body. And to do that, we need to make a slurry, which is the clay and water. So I've got a container here with some water in it. Grab your paintbrush or your fingers, doesn't matter if you get messy, and just wet the clay in the water like this until it turns into a bit of a paste. And that's going to act like glue and stick our legs on. So once you've got some sloppy clay, we'll pull the body over and stick the legs on. Just line the body up so it's straight. Just put a bit of slurry there, just like glue, and then just press it to the body. Give it a smooth, and then just let that sit for a while and dry so it hardens a bit. All right, beautiful. Legs are on, we're gonna leave that to dry, but tune in tomorrow, because we're gonna do the eyes, the nose, the lips, and the tongue. I'm Claire Foxton and I paint murals. Today I'm painting a five-storey mural for the Wonderwalls Festival in Wollongong. Um, I'll be painting this artwork over three days. This is definitely the tallest artwork that I've done. This is about 15 metres tall, which is about the size of a six-level car park. So that's, you know, very challenging and I get to go up in a cherry picker, which is exciting um, and daunting because I'm a little bit scared of heights. An artist is someone who uh, generally just expresses themselves, whether that be through art or music or drama. I would call myself a visual artist, so I like to express myself through paint and other mixed media. To be a live painter or a, a muralist, I suppose you need to have um, determination, a lot of persistence, um, and also a lot of energy because uh, it's quite fast paced and by the end of it, you get quite knackered and a little bit of artistic talent doesn't go astray as well. <laughs> I was really arty when I was a kid. I used to make things out of anything I could find. I used to make clothes and dolls and all sorts of things, so I was quite crafty and I used to paint portraits from, you know, about the age of 13 or 14. So I'm mostly self-taught though. I never really had art lessons as a kid, but my parents always used to buy me, you know, um, art materials to sort of kickstart that side of things and support me in that way. I've been painting live uh, since I was about 16 or 17 at various charity events in my local area. And I suppose that's been the feeder for a lot of the mural work that I've been doing in that it's very much performance art and I'm performing live in front of an audience or the public. It's so nerve wracking painting in front of people at first, but once you get into the groove of it, it's almost like, I guess, a musician getting up on stage. They sort of lose themselves in that. See how we've had to rig some extra space just to hold stuff, hold paint and everything. Generally, I get started on a piece by uh, being inspired by someone, whether it's someone I know or just someone that I've seen in the street. I've done photo shoots with people too, where I can get them to pose a certain way and get the shot that I'm after. So generally it starts with, with that, with finding, finding a subject or, or a muse, so to speak. Mistakes are a part of the process, really. So if I make a mistake, there's always painting over it or using the mistake to your advantage and, and, and working around it. I never really see them as mistakes though. I see them as opportunities for the artwork to take a different direction or be improved somewhat. But, but it is paint, so you can always paint over it if, if it is something that's not, not what you are expecting. I think the best advice that I could give any young person wanting to get into art is just to do it and follow your passion. Don't worry about whether it's going to make you money or, you know, getting a, you know, a, a big career out of it. Just do it now and, and do it as much as you can and, and see what comes of it, you know. It's just, it's just about doing what you love and, and getting the most out of life, for sure. Yar, ahoy me hearties, avast ye cutlass lovin' biscuit. <laughs> I 
I don't know, I can't do that for very long. But what I can do is I can show you how to draw an octopus pirate. All you're gonna need is an eraser and a pencil, some paper, a marker pen, black will do, and an orange and a blue marker. All right, we'll start by drawing some shapes. So first thing you wanna do is draw like an upside down egg shape. It's kind of upside down and tilted. Next, you're gonna put a triangle shape on the top of the head to make the hat. What? Just like that. Perfect. Now for the eyes, they're gonna go quite low on his head. They're on the side of his face. So now we're gonna do the neck and you're gonna bring like a, a curve shape down either side, kind of out like half a circle. Now that's gonna join up to the first legs that we do. So we'll start on the left. Just like that. And then at the very end, curve it the opposite direction. Beneath it, you wanna follow that line the whole way to the end. But start out thicker and get thinner as you go. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And again, we'll follow this leg up and around. See how we're giving them lots of space between them too? I'm gonna put a sword into his hand, just like that. And then another rectangle coming out from the top of it. We'll pop it in front of that leg and a triangle at the top. Then just underneath that first rectangle, you wanna draw kind of a long jelly bean shape and that's gonna be the octopus's arm holding onto it and then the bottom of the sword. Okay, so we've got three legs on each side. We just need to do the last pair of legs. These are gonna go up the back behind all the other legs. Now, to draw the eye patch, so over the right eye there, just a kind of wonky triangle shape, and then a line running from that up to his hat across his face. And, a bone shaped emblem, two straight lines, some circles at the end. There we go, pirate. Now we wanna go around all of the outside lines with a black marker. We'll start with his head, uh, following that line. Good to do them one on each side as you go so you can let the ink dry and keep from smudging. Make sure it goes behind the other legs. We're gonna add a little pattern across his forehead, a circle shape that doesn't quite go the whole way around. So we're gonna draw some bubbles. Okay, some boobles. Um, so you wanna make a circle with your texture, just like that. And put a little kind of dash in the top there, it's like a reflection. Okay, now we're gonna color in the main part of our octopus. So grab your orange texture. You wanna make kind of scratchy lines the whole way along. When we do each leg, you wanna leave a, a bit of white at the bottom of it and bring the line all the way up to the top part of the leg. Now colour in the hat with your black marker. Da, 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 da. This is colouring music. Great. And there you have your very own pirate octopus. All it needs now is a parrot fish. Maybe a few peg legs. Eight. We can't pay, we can't draw, but our favorite art is breakdancing and tricking. Let's go!
from south of France, from Toulouse, and we traveled here to share our arts with the Sydney people. We do it in the streets every day, every night. It's all about applying your interest into your art. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had to tell a story or write a story, but have we ever had to tell a story through sculpture? Well, Nadum Karim did, and he is an artist, and he told it through a powerful series called The Travellers. Travellers are made up of a series of 10 different sculptures, each depicting a different group of people who came to live in Melbourne. And this is seen through the creative vision and imagination of Karim, who not only paints and sculpts, but is also an architect. You can see how each of his skills come into play in this work. As you can see, these sculptures are huge, towering 7.5 metres high and are made up of thousands of individual pieces of stainless steel. Each sculpture represents a different period of migration and the one at the head of the bridge is called Gayip, which represents the Aboriginal people. Another one I quite like is the Melbourne Beauty. It kind of looks like a bunny rabbit, but it actually represents the gold rush period in Melbourne. There's the urban wheel, the techno man, and the running couple, they are refugees. It's a great example that art isn't just something to be looked at. It's a really clever way to tell a story.